All right guys, stay tuned because in this video, I'm gonna show you how I thread the end of my tang and make a pommel nut for my takedown knives. Let's get to it. Okay, so I wanna thread about uh, this much of my tang. So I need to grind down the sides of it. I'm gonna thread it with um, a quarter inch thread and I need to mark some lines on there about a quarter inch apart so I can grind down to it. So I got my height gauge set. I uh, put it against this square uh, vice jaw just to hold the knife nice and square. And go ahead and scribe some lines on each side. Now I've got some lines here that I can go by and uh, grind them down and start shaping this to uh, thread it later. Early coffee break. So we're gonna thread the tang with uh, quarter 20 threads. So here's a quarter 20 bolt right here. And measuring this with the calipers, it comes out to be uh, just under uh, one quarter inch, just by a few thousandths of an inch. So that's, that's how wide I'm gonna shape my tang to. And I'm gonna go ahead and round it. The tang is plenty wide for a quarter inch, but it's, it's only about 200 thousandths of an inch thick down here. So it's pretty much just gonna have threads uh, on two sides and then there won't be any threads here. It'll be kind of uh, oval shaped. Now that I've got the tang a quarter inch wide down here, um, I need to start rounding the corners. Uh, this won't be completely round like I said though because this is about 200 thousandths of an inch wide and it's 250 thousandths over here, 245. So I just need to uh, hit the corners, uh, hit the corners down and make sure everything is just under 250 thousandths so we can uh, thread it. All right, now we've got this rounded to where I want it. A special note that you should know, you definitely want to soften this um, area that you're going to thread. I believe that whole tang got quenched when I hardened the blade, but I drew the whole tang back down to like a, um, a blue, almost gray color, so it's uh, not, not nearly as hard as the blade, but more springy. That may not even be soft enough. I may, I may actually have to go in with the torch and um, completely anneal the very end of the tang, like heat it up to just around 1400 degrees or so. Uh, but I'm going to try threading it like this. It's, it's going to be a little bit hard still, but not near as hard as the blade. We'll see how the, uh, see how the, the cutter works. Something that's really good for your taps and dies to remember, I always like to blow them out after I use them every time. You can do it beforehand too, but it's it's just ready to go and nice and uh, clean to get all the chips out if I do it right after I use it. So. Get all those nasty chips out of there before I put it away. I like to run over my newly made threads with a uh, wire wheel just to clean up some of the burrs and stuff on there. So this knife is going to have a symmetrical handle. It's really important to make sure that this threaded tang comes out right in the center of the blade. So just to double check and make sure that it's right down the center, I'm going to use a height gauge. I'm going to go down until it's just barely scraping and then flip it over and see where we're at. Let's hit about 64 there. Now it's barely scraping again. 58. Yeah, so it's it's like right, right there, right very close to the center, plus or minus a couple thousandths of an inch. So that'll just help when we go to bolt the handle assembly together. If this is in line, everything else will just fall into place, literally. Um, if we're lucky. 
Also, you want the, the pommel nut centered and everything too, so that's gotta be that's gotta be in the center for that to happen. I'm just trying to think through my next steps. If I do this in the right order, it'll be really easy, but if I do it in the wrong order, it'll just make life complicated and hard. I'm trying to figure out the process on how I want to do this uh, pommel nut thing. I gotta figure out all the sizes of the pommel nut and everything right now before I actually make it. And figure out the size of my drill bits that I'm gonna use to drill out the pommel and figure out what size the countersink is going to be in the pommel. I'm still doing that. I should have tons and tons of different size 1018 steel sitting around, but I don't. I have like three sizes to choose from. Yeah, well, it's got to be 1018. Like, if you ask about it, like the guy needs to be absolutely confident that it's 1018. Not like, oh, maybe it is. fresh blade, but it still takes a lot of pressure. X marks the spot. I'm gonna put a center punch there for us to drill. There we go. I need to find my uh, tap, my quarter 20 tap, and then uh, figure out what size drill bit we need to use. So here's my uh, quarter 20 uh, taper tap. It's got a real aggressive taper. I always use this one to start out with. It's a really high quality, expensive, uh, I think it's American or German made tap. And then uh, I've, got a, I've got a bottoming one here. Well, actually it's just another taper one that I've turned into a bottoming tap. And I've got a less aggressive bottoming tap. Yeah, so it comes out just a tiny bit over a quarter inch. So we probably want a good thread that's like at least a good 20 thousandths of an inch or so. I don't ever go by any charts, I just measure and pick out whichever drill bit I want when I'm doing threading most of the time. Okay, so if, if our hole's quarter inch and this drill bit's that big, then that would virtually give us about 35 thousandths of thread total. I think I want a little bit more than that. I'd like about 20 thousandths on each side, so we need to be about 40 thousandths under. I think I'll try this one. This is 50 thousandths under. I'll see if we can thread into that. That should be pretty good. To figure out the depth of the thread, I want to go probably just a little bit more than what this tang is. I'll go about that deep. I want my hole to go straight in, so I'm going to use this little uh, this little stubby hole starter. It's nice and stubby and short to make sure it starts out with a nice straight hole. We'll try threading that and if the hole's not big enough, uh, I can always drill it out with a little bit larger hole. That hole starter left kind of a nice little chamfer on there too because it was over, over the size of the hole that we were making. That's kind of cool. Okay, now I'm gonna move to the uh, next tap which has just a little less taper on it and then the third time I go through, I'm gonna use the bottoming tap with uh, almost no taper at all. It just has the very end, has a little bit of a taper on it. Uh, in between each time, I'll blow this out with air um, to get all the chips and stuff out of there. Homemade bottoming tap, AKA uh, taper tap that's been ground down a little bit. We are threaded. I'm gonna stick a bolt in there 
and then we'll uh, knock off the corners with the grinder just because it's a little quicker and then start turning it down on the lathe. I want to mark how deep the hole is first, so just so I can measure it later. Stick something in there and mark it and then measure, set that aside for later. Hey, maybe let's just skip all the work of making a pommel on this knife and have a pommel nut only on the end. Just screw that on there. Call it done. Might need a washer in there. Handle's done. This was the first pommel nut you saw me working on and uh, I decided to redo it because I had a shape in my mind that just wasn't coming out and I kept shaping it down trying to save it but it, it ended up kind of with a shape that I didn't want on this knife. It might still work for a different project but uh, it just wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted something a little bit uh, larger and more grand. So I started over on it and uh, this is the new one that we've got. Since I'm drilling in a spot that doesn't have anywhere flat for the drill bit to start out, I'm going to use this ball end mill bit to uh, start the hole and then I'll finish it with a drill bit.
much done with the pommel nut for now, so I've got to get this uh, this bolt out of it. It's in there pretty tight. I might want to run a tap through there one more time to clean up the threads because I did I did press down on the threads pretty hard when it was in the milling machine and also in the uh, lathe, so it might have made these threads tighter than I want because this bolt's coming out pretty tight. Yeah, see what it feels like on the tang of the knife first before I do that. Yeah, I'm gonna run a tap down there one more time. That's much better. Just running that uh, tap down through there. Clean it up one more time. Let's see if I can actually assemble the pommel now. I might be able to actually put the pommel on. That is one massive, massive hockey puck pommel. That's what she looks like on the knife, or dagger, or sword. I don't know what to call this. It's starting to take shape. You can actually hold it. And uh, so if you guys want to do this, um, this drill bit, that I'm using for a takedown tool is it's about a hundred and eighty five thousandths thick excuse me eighty five thousandths so on smaller knives I use a sixteenth inch drill bit as my takedown tool but on the bigger ones I like to use a little bit larger drill bit with a little larger hole in the pommel nut and that way I can really torque it down since this is a really big project I wanted to go ahead and use the, the larger size hole but uh, I use probably a 16th inch hole on pommel nuts, on knives, anything with a 10 inch blade and down probably. And then I've even done some really small uh, knives that have um, like a 3 uh, 364th inch hole in the pommel nut just because they're really small. So yeah, you can kind of gauge that depending on what size knife you're doing and uh, how much torque it needs to have on it. On the final assembly, what I'll do is um, I mask everything off with tape just to make sure I don't scrape up my pommel, but I'm not I'm not on the final assembly yet, so it's okay right now. But yeah, so what I do on the final assembly to really get a lot of torque on it, I'll put my uh, little vice grips on one side and then some needle nose pliers on the other, and I will tighten this thing down, like to the point where I think this bit is about ready to break, and that gets it really nice and tight. So I'm considering this pommel nut virtually done for now. It still needs a couple more things done, like I might end up putting some gold inlay or engraving on it, and then uh, and then I'll take it to the buffer and uh, buff it up nice and shiny so it's got a mirror finish, and then it's gonna be gun blued because it's made out of mild steel. But uh, you can make them out of stainless or brass or copper or pretty much anything you want, Damascus, and it's pretty much the same uh, process. It can be a little bit harder to thread sometimes if it's Damascus, um, but yeah. So this is pretty much done for now. I'll do gold inlay uh, later on down the road on it. Thanks for following along on how I make my pommel nut and how I get my tang threaded for my takedown assembly knives. If you guys want to see more content in the future, then uh, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you guys like takedown knives or full tang or hidden tang or what's your preferred style of knife to, to have or use or make. I will see all you crazy knife people in the next video. Bye bye.